Okay, just, uh, just first of all, congratulations to Seattle. I mean, they played a terrific game uh, on the offensive end. I mean, they made a lot of tough shots with a hand in their face, and that's to their credit. Um, I didn't think our defense was that bad for part of it, but every time I looked around and they're knocking down some big shots, uh, it's why they have a chance to win a championship. Uh, their offense is, uh, is really good, and they had a good game plan for us. Uh, we hung in, but it just wasn't good enough. This atmosphere was great. Uh, hats off to everybody in the organization, to the fans. Um, you know, that's what home court advantage gets you, and uh, that was big. Yeah, Kareem. Microphone. I mean, we tried switching some things to just not get any gaps. Um, we tried, um, you know, trying to get it out of Stewie's hands. I mean, we did a good job, I thought, on Stewie in the first half. And overall, I mean, she didn't shoot a great percentage, but everybody else took up the slack for her until she got going. I mean, uh, you know, Gabby didn't play much in the second half, but she had a good first half. And then, you know, Talbot and Magrigor and others, you know, made some shots. Uh, I thought Sue did her usual of, you know, getting everybody organized to where they're supposed to be and making sure the right people have shots. And they just shared the ball. I mean, you know, they had five players, all five starters in double figures. Um, there wasn't much answer. I felt like a little bit like 2018, <laughs> um, that they were just a little bit better all the way around. Um, we couldn't match uh, the same production that they had. And, you know, that's part of our growing up a little bit. Um, you can have as good a defense as you want. You still got to be able to score too. And we, we, we weren't good enough, you know, tonight at either. And I mean, they played like a great team tonight. We just worked on a couple adjustments and, you know, for, it obviously didn't work at the start of the third quarter because they came out firing. Um, you know, I thought that their, their aggressive double teams on Elena uh, in the third quarter uh, disrupted the flow of the game for us offensively. Uh, we were scrambling a little bit. And, you know, we had um, a couple tough turnovers at the wrong time. You know, we didn't have a ton, ton of turnovers, but they led to fast break points. I mean, the pass, it's one thing to throw it out of bounds, but we threw some cross-court passes that they intercepted, and then they go down and score on them. Those are hard. You know, you know, it takes it takes you from like a six point game or five point game to nine or ten in a hurry. And my five of those eight numbers were in that first quarter. Um, yeah. Just kind of a continuation of what you were talking about. Sam and Dan got them into an offensive round. Yeah, it did. I mean, it helps. It helps uh, everybody's confidence when you can, you know, score in transition or get a wide open look, and um, you know they did. I mean, they were just better. They were just better than us today. Yeah, she did. She made big shots, and you know, on top of you know, she has the the uh, duty every night to guard the other team's you know best wing player. Uh, she had to guard Jewel at one end and try to score at the other end. Uh, Tasha's a warrior. Um, you know, she's going to play uh, through everything. Um, and that's, you know, why she's had success, you know, in this league, getting better every year. She's worked on things. Um, I felt good watching her warm up today, uh, shooting threes. It felt like it was going to go in. We just didn't get enough people, you know, to, to join her in that. And that part of that's their defense, too. Yep. Um, were you expecting that from them entering the series, and how was she kind of able to, to get hot from out there, even though she maybe didn't have the best shooting season that she really wanted? Well, she's worked on it, and she's had looks. We we expected that they would try to double off of her, um, and 
AC, who's been struggling a little bit shooting, and, you know, both of them made threes today. Um, but, you know, um, they took, uh, they made it very tough for Elena. Um, and we have, we have a little bit, you know, less experience in them in some, in some regards uh, as far as, you know, through our whole lineup. Um, I thought that their, their depth in the lineup paid, up, paid off a little bit. But Tasha's, you know, Tasha's worked on it. She's, she's done what she's supposed to do. Just uh, it was a field that you know she was playing pretty well. Um, you know she made some threes. Um, just some quickness out there. Um, that's a tough choice for a coach uh, to go with a bench player, your sixth person versus one of your starters. It just had a, that was just my gut feel at the time. I'm not sure I understand the question. I mean, we did go other areas. I mean, our shot distribution is that, you know, Elena got 14 shots, Ariel got 14 shots, Natasha got 16 shots, um, and then everybody else got five or six. Um, we, you know, we used Elena as a screener or, or put her in situations where she could see the double team coming. Um, she passed the ball out. I mean, the way our season's gone, if we scored 84 points most nights, we win. Um, you know, that, that's the truth of the matter. I mean, we average, you know, 80 points a game, and 84 usually is a winning m number for us. Um, and we've been able to hold Seattle into that high 70s, 80 range most of the time. But tonight they come out and get 97. So it was as much them making shots as anything else. We have some more in person here, too. Yeah, Mike, with a, with a healthier roster with Elena back, I, I know it's hard to think about this just 20 minutes after Yeah, that. it is. <laughs> what, what do you think you reestablished this year? Uh, I, I, in fact, I just told them, you know, in the locker room that, you know, it's hard because, you know, we were known as a really good offensive team for several years, and we had, you know, a little bit different makeup to our lineup. Um, but because of salary cap and other issues, uh, we reconstructed our roster to be more of a defensive-oriented roster. Uh, it was what we had to do out of necessity and and some wish. I mean, you want to have the best of both worlds. Um, but, um, you know, we're going to have some decisions to make in the off season. Uh, we got free agency decisions. We're going to have a lottery pick. You know, we got to try to reconstruct some parts of our roster to get balance. Um, but it's kind of what we faced to be going from 2018 to th 2019, too. We, we needed to make a few adjustments to get better. Um, we got to have a situation on the court where every player you have out there is, is honored um, by the defense. Uh, that, you know, somebody doesn't say, okay, you're the weak link, and then you are the weak link. I mean, we can't have that. And, it, and it's varied off and on. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't pretend to have all the answers for you at the moment, you know, going into it. But, you know, clearly, um, you know, we finished fifth um, and not first or second. So that's one thing. Um, we'll see, you know, where Elena is. But this, you know, one of the biggest things about this year is the progress we made of, you know, managing her, uh, getting her through the season and, and trying some things for her and, and allowing her to go through it and be able to play a lot of games down the stretch. The other part of next season is it won't be as condensed either uh, with the schedule. So there will be a little bit more break in the schedule where she can have days that right now we wouldn't have played her during the season that she may be able to play. But that's a long way off. This, uh, the, the WNBA offseason seems like an eternity. So um, it gives you time to make some decisions, but it's a long time to, to feel like you're going to get back on the court and do something about it. Mike, you've uh, you coached against Sue as an opponent for, for a long time, um, and here she is having 18 and 10 in a, in a postseason game. Are you, are you, I'm mad. Are you ready for her to retire? And yes. What, what, has made, what has made her just the challenge over the years when you've when you coached against her? Because she knows instinctively the nights that 
you know, she recognizes the nights that she needs to be more aggressive offensively. She knows who's got the hot hands. She sees the matchups that are favorable. I mean, she, you know, we talk all the time about coaches on the floor, um, and there really aren't that many, to be honest with you. But she is one of them because she has an innate sense of feeling the game. Like, okay, we've come down, this isn't working, but this did. And she she's l literally can tell a player, hey, go there because I know that they're going to do this. She, she, ha she has a feel, and she studies the game. And she knows, hey, tonight I can be a little bit more aggressive offensively because they're taking away something from my team. But they're going to give me some space. And we, we did that. We had to, out of necessity, you know, try to take Jewel and, and uh, Stewie out of some things. So, um, you know, as much as I love Sue, I will uh, be glad that she's sitting over in the stands next year when we walk in this place. Yeah, back there. Microphone. Hi, uh, I have a question about Rui Machida. Yes. How do you see uh, her performance today? I mean, she played six minutes, and I thought she gave us a lift. Um, but we felt like in the in the going in the fourth quarter, we needed more size on the court defensively. Um, the way we were playing, Rui has grown throughout the year and gotten better. Um, you know, her future in the WNBA will be dependent on how much more aggressive uh, she can be on offense. She's been, you know, a pest defensively, and she's a great passer. But, you know, when you play in this league, you got to make people honor you every time on, on the offensive end. And so that's her next step of her growth. Any more Zoom ones? One more. Yeah, Coach, we'll take the last question from Olivia. Hey, Coach. Um, I'm not really going to have that conversation with you guys right now. I haven't even formulated my own opinions about some things. Um, no offense, but it's really not a fair question to ask me at this moment. Uh, we just lost a big game, and there's a lot of stuff on the table. That'll be, you know, most teams have exit interviews right away. I probably will delay some of the exit interviews with my veterans until we can just sort some things out. Uh, you know, we'll have a couple players leaving right away to go overseas. Uh, I'll have conversations with them. But for everybody else, you know, we have five or six of our core players signed for next year, and there's no rush to have those conversations at the moment. All right, thanks.